Hello. Thank you for everyone that's been watching my videos. I hope they help. And please, as always, feel free to ask me any questions or give me suggestions of what you want to learn about. Because when you do that, I go and I learn more. Um, today we're going to do an introduction to conditional statements, uh, which are called if statements. So I have a little program here set up for us to use. And essentially it runs like this. So just a reminder, this is a, a class, which is a program in Java, and we have a main method, and a main method is where the program always starts, and then it works from the top all the way down to the bottom. But currently, we have no way of telling the computer whether or not to run specific lines of code. So if I run this program, what it does is declares an integer A, um, asks you to input a passcode, and then you put an input in, so my passcode is 999, and I hit enter, and it says access granted. Well, this is not a very useful program, because if I put 100, it says access granted. And in fact, I get in regardless. So what we're going to do is we're going to include a conditional statement in this. And what that will do is it will only execute a part of this code, provided that condition is true. And the structure we're going to use is an if statement. So the first question I ask myself is, what line is conditional in terms of it being outputted? And that is this line right here. We only want it to print access granted if we get the constant correct. So, or sorry, not the constant, the passcode. So what I'm going to do is I'll go just above that and I'll put if and open a set of brackets. So inside these brackets we place what are called what's called a condition. And in this case I'm checking the variable a. And let's imagine that my passcode was 999. So what I say is if A is, and now this is an important word here, I'm going to check if A is equivalent to 999. The reason why I choose equivalent is because when we say equals, we often mean that we're copying that value into the variable. So if I say A is equal to 9, it means A is assigned that value. But if I say A is equivalent to 9, the computer is simply checking if 999 is in, the, is in that variable location. So I say if A is equivalent, and equivalent is two equal signs, 999. Nine, nine. So now I have my condition set up. And what I need to do next is I need to tell the computer what block of code is associated with this conditional statement. To do that, I simply open a brace, and then I go down to where I want that, want this block to end, and I close it. So now if I run this, it will say, please input a code, and I've put 999, access granted. And then I run it, it says, please input a passcode, and if I put 100, nothing happens. And that's because when I put in 100, it assigns A the value of 100, and then says, is A equivalent to 100? Sorry, it says, is A equivalent to 999? And we know the answer is no there, so it skips that block of code and continues on to the end. Let's just do a little bit of housekeeping to make this look nicer. The first thing I would do is I would indent whatever is inside that block. And what that does to me is it allows my eye to naturally follow the flow of this code. Indentation is very important, especially when you get into larger programs. The next thing I like to do is I like to add a little comment above the if structure just to say what it's doing. So this is checking to see if A is correct, whatever it might be. And then finally, what I like to do is right here, um, at the very end, of the, I want to remember that this brace is associated with this if statement. So one way to do that is I put a comment after it, and I actually put the condition again. Now I know this could be way down at the other end of the program. So way down here, and I see this, and I can very quickly identify what condition that is that brace is associated with. Let's talk about one last organizational piece for this program. There we go. Again, we're writing small programs, so it's not hard to say if I wanted to change this passcode to 104, I could simply do that. But what would happen if you check this passcode seven or eight times in this program? Well, then you'd have to go and change that passcode to 104 in each of those locations. So one thing I like to, like to encourage students to do is as opposed to checking the value 104, the passcode, if you make a constant at the top of your program, and a constant is declared by putting the word final, or using what we say the modifier final, 
int, and we'll call this passcode. And remember, all constants are capitalized. And then we put 104 here. So now what I can do is I can change this to a is equivalent to passcode. And what that means, if, pass, if we have this small little segment seven or eight times in our program and our passcode changes, we only have to change it at the top of the program. So watch, if I run this now, it's your passcode 104, perfect. If I now change this to 105 and I run this, it says input passcode and I put 105. In the next video, we're going to look at how to print out a message if this person um, gets the wrong passcode because right now what we see is if they put the wrong passcode 999 it prints nothing and that's not good from the perspective of informing the user what's going on. I hope this video helped.